Let's try something new. I want to try an accordion style junk journal themed Asian fusion. <laughs> Whoops. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. Hello, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Tina, the owner of the Digital Collage Club, created some really cool looking Japanese art squares and dominoes and I really wanted to use them but I also wanted some bigger ephemera to use in a junk journal. Tina kindly agreed to add another Japanese kit to her site which is called 56 Japanese Art Ephemera Cards and it was just what I needed so thank you so much again Tina for accommodating my wish. And you can see here all the beautiful cards that she has included in this set. I really love them so much. If you're new here and don't know the Digital Collage Club yet, it's a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital collage sheets, vintage graphics, scrapbooking, card making, and digital craft supplies. You get instant access and all images are created especially for this club. Each week, new images are added and you can sell whatever craft items you create with these images. You can get either an annual or lifetime access and I have discount codes for you linked below. I do want to mention that I receive a commission if you use these links so you will be helping my small creative business out as well. So thank you so much in advance if you sign up or if you have signed up in the past using my codes. So it took me a while to decide on a journal format and finally decided I want to try an accordion style journal following a tutorial by Meg from Meg Journals, which is linked in the description box below. So let's get started. So I'm switching over to voiceover now because I think that was easier for this video. So here I'm showing you some other materials I'm going to use for this journal. I have these two Chinese books. What was neat about these was the first one had the writing vertically and this one you see has the writing horizontally. So it's cool that I have both to vary. Next I have some other random bits that were in the Sora Aksan bento box. And I will link again the video for you below. I've linked it so many times in case you've never seen the unboxing of this amazing subscription box. So here are some of the papers that I still haven't used. I don't even remember when this unboxing was. It's been maybe two years, roughly. I don't know. And I still have all these papers left. It's absolutely amazing. This box has been lasting me forever which is really cool actually and there might be a couple of pieces in here that are not from the box but uh, they still are in the Asian theme I'm going for here so all is good like I think these stickers uh, I don't know if they were in the box or not this I know was not in the box but it's Japanese so super cool these also I think were not in the box they're like notes that you're supposed to roll up and this notepad also was not in the box, but it's absolutely gorgeous with these goldfish. Definitely want to use that somehow. And finally, I have these amazing wallpapers. All in the Asian style, as you can see. I am truly, truly spoiled having these. So again, I have to tell you, I know I've said it before, but if you have never checked your local stores, your interior design stores, your wallpaper stores, paint stores, whatever, go in there and ask if they have old wallpaper books that they don't need any longer. Chances are they would be throwing them away. It took me a few times to find a store that had some, but finally I did. And I didn't even ask for this one. They just brought me random books and this was one of them which of course made me very very happy of course using a junk journal or making a junk journal in the style that I am now it's quite small so a lot of these patterns are way too big for what I'm going to use 
but I took out all the ones that I thought maybe I'd use a little piece of. And then I also have these two Japanese washi tapes. They're absolutely gorgeous, especially this red one is amazing. It has some gold elements in it. Really, really beautiful. I don't remember where I got those from. And finally, we have this little Chinese girl. She's a manga girl and I drew her on my computer in 2007. Can you believe it? It's absolutely unbelievable. So maybe I'll add her in my journal somewhere as well, just because I think it's funny. And here I'm cutting down the book pages and the wallpapers. And it looked so easy in Meg's video, but honestly, I was really struggling putting this together and figuring out where I need to cut and where I need to fold. <laughs> so definitely check out Meg's video. It's not that she didn't explain it well. It's just that, I don't know, I just didn't get it at first. <laughs> I was really struggling. You can't probably even see it here in the video because I cut so much out. But uh, I, I don't know. It was... It was just difficult, <laughs> but I did then later get the hang of it and then I understood better how the system works and then it worked really well and I'm just choosing some papers here. I'm trying to vary them. So basically you're gluing one on top of the other and the thing is when it's not long enough, because I think with this style it's weird if the pages are not the same length then you need to add a scrap on the bottom to adjust the height. So for example, for this one, I had that issue. And I was also <laughs> trying to figure out, do I fold it under the other one or over the other one? And yeah, it, you, you will see once you do it <laughs> on your own, a lot of questions will come up that you did not anticipate. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the challenge. I loved figuring out how this would work best. And Meg uses a lot more scraps than I do. I mean, I really love the way she did hers. Hers is beautiful. But for the way that I wanted mine to look, I just didn't want to use that many scraps. I wanted to use like more of the full book pages and the beautiful wallpaper. That's what I was concentrating on. So I'm using my glue stick to glue the pages together. Yeah, so the scrap was on there as well and now I had a full page continuing with another book page. So every other page is a book page and I varied between the horizontal and the vertical script. And it's really cool how it then folds out like this. Like I had so much fun with this. You really need to try this. Once I got a hang of how to do this, it was really hard to stop. And I'm not even sure how many pages I ended up adding. And the cool thing also with this method is if you leave the first and last page just as they are, you can always attach more pages if you realize later you want your book to be thicker. So that's a really fun aspect actually. So I think I decided to do around 10 pages, but I'm really not sure. <laughs> And of course, the other beautiful thing about making a journal like this is there's no binding, there's no sewing. So if maybe if you're a beginner, maybe this would be a good one to start off with. I think maybe Meg mentions that in her video as well. It's very beginner friendly because a lot of beginners are sometimes intimidated by all the sewing, which I totally understand. So maybe this is a good option where you only have to glue. So I think at this point, I kind of understood what I was doing, more or less. <laughs> and it was so fun to incorporate all this beautiful wallpaper. And I really like that the look of alternating it with the book pages, because I think the wallpapers alone would be a bit overwhelming, because each one is so beautiful and you wouldn't know where to look. But with the break of the book page in between, I thought that worked out quite well. My wallpapers that I had in this Asian style were 
a mix of light ones and darker ones and also Tina's cards had a mix of lighter ones and darker ones so in theory you could of course mix those but I decided for this journal that I wanted to stick with the light colors and that way make it maybe a little more feminine it seemed to me here's another one of those gorgeous pieces of wallpaper look at that I just love it so by this time I realized I need to cut my pieces of paper quite a bit wider to accommodate a flap always taking my bone folder to make the creases right on top of each other I wanted this book to be fairly neat I think with this method it's kind of hard to have a lot of rough and ragged edges because you have this fold on the outside always so here's the flip through of the pages that I had put together the cool thing is now you just flip it over and you flip it to the other side and here you have all the back sides it's just so fun so either you can flip it like this from both sides or you can just open it like an accordion hence the name obviously <laughs> so now I had a lot of back sides of the wallpaper like here empty which of course is not a good look not a look we want <laughs> and so I'm going to start off by decorating those in this case I wanted to add a part of this beautiful Japanese mushroom paper this one I got years ago in a happy mail from a dear friend here's another back side of a wallpaper trying to figure out what to do with it I really like this paper although it's quite busy I decided to add it anyway and then I still had this gap on the top so I just used a part of this beautiful goldfish paper that I had and these pages are all fine here's another back side that we need to cover for this one I decided to use some paint so I'm using my beloved Jade Green from Action which in my opinion is very similar to the speckled egg from Tim Holtz even though I've never had that color but from what I can see on the videos it looks very very similar and I just love this color so much so I just decided to paint this strip in the middle and then I wanted to add this beautiful Japanese postcard by making it into a tuck spot so I just put glue on two sides now I'm just gluing that on there then flipping over to the other side again here's another empty page on the right so again I decided to paint this and I think this time I actually painted the whole page if I'm not mistaken or pretty much the whole page I used way too much paint <laughs> so it took quite a long time to dry so paint is always an option when you have a blank page just paint over it <laughs> and then I wanted to add some stenciling so you probably can't see it right now but on the left I have these beautiful sakura petals in a very light pink and so I remembered I had this stencil which is actually meant for cake <laughs> probably for icing or something a powder sugar I have no idea how these are used on cakes but I decided to use this because the flowers kind of looked like sakura flowers and I took my white gesso from golden which is a little more firm than my other cheap gesso from action and I decided to stencil flower pattern through there I love the contrast of the white on this jade green and I wanted to fill the whole page so I'm just adding petals except for the bottom right because I'm going to put something over there so what I'm showing you here is the stencil apparently still had some red color on it so when I stenciled through that it actually gave me some very light pink coloring which was perfect because the other page was pink anyway so it kind of looks like it's going over to the right page which is really cute and then I added this cute little card which was also from the Sora Aksan bento box and I attached it 
so that I have a pocket on that left side and you can flip it open and write on it. So on this blank page I added another piece of some beautiful wallpaper. And this wallpaper is so textured as well, it feels really good. And then I wanted to make a pocket out of this, so I punched a partial circle on the top and it didn't punch well because the paper is super thin. I should have put another paper underneath so I had to adjust it with my scissors but that was totally fine. So now I'm going to glue that on three sides to make a long narrow pocket. And glue that onto the wallpaper. Moving on, checking what other pages are still completely blank. There's another one. Wanted to add another piece of another gorgeous wallpaper. Then I went back to the pages I just did before and I decided I wanted to add this beautiful red washi tape. And all the washi tape I'm going to be adding, adding it in a few places here. I'm afterwards going to take off again and put glue on it because there's no way this washi is going to hold up, especially on the smooth wallpaper. Always good idea if you use washi tape in your journals to glue them down. It's easy either with a glue stick or I just used my art glitter glue. And here, instead of a washi tape, I wanted to use this strip I had left from that busy red paper. Here I wanted to add this beautiful turquoise washi. Just a strip to have an accent. Now flipping back to the other side, this one was very busy already. Here I wanted to add another just a small strip of this beautiful red. Here I have a scrap piece with this blue, uh, blue. I say blue because it looks like blue, jade green that I had painted some leftover paint on and I just wanted to patch, you know, like make a patch on the bottom. It didn't need it, but I just thought it looked cute. Then adding a little more washi there here, just so that it continues throughout the book so that there is a continuous theme. Here's another strip of that red paper. And now I wanted to add some gold accents. So I still had some old gold paint on this palette that had dried up, but it, since it's water soluble, I was able to revive it again. And actually what I'm doing here on that page was totally not what I wanted. I don't know how that happened. I really didn't want to paint the whole page, but somehow that just kind of happened. It's a beautiful, beautiful dark gold. It might not show as well on the screen. And this is what I actually wanted to do. I just wanted to put some accents on all of the book pages. And this is again an element that just continues throughout this journal and just kind of makes everything cohesive. I really love when you when that happens in a journal. Here I'm varying the direction of my strokes, but I believe it's mostly two strokes, one longer, one shorter. I think I do vary it a little bit. And this is really fun to do. Yeah, here I vary it, so I put three small square dots up there. Once I had done that, <laughs> I had this packaging in which I had some stickers. This was not in the box, and I really loved the shape. It was so cute, and I was inspired by the front of it that had the hole, so I decided I'm going to use the back side. I didn't want the face that the front had. So I decided to cut out a hole that was a little bit bigger than the one in the front. And I wanted this beautiful Mount Fuji to look through that. So I'm cutting this apart. And then I'm cutting a strip of one of the book pages, folding it in half. So with this I'm going to attach 
this Mount Fuji <laughs> so that it flaps down onto the bottom. So I'm going to add some glue then later on the bottom half as well. Here I'm just cutting the way, cutting away the excess. Now putting glue on the other part of the flap and then just gluing that on the bottom of the book page so that it flap, flips down like that. And then I'm going to glue in this beautiful picture from the Digital Collage Club. So this is the first Digital Collage Club image I'm using in this journal. Just making sure I'm putting it in the exact spot I want it to be. And now it looks through like this. Isn't that so beautiful? I just love that. And then I decided the whole page was still a little bit blank. So I wanted to use some more decorations. And I wanted to use this die cut, which was from Debbie's Happy Mail from the US. Her amazing, amazing Happy Mail. I will link that video of the unboxing below in case you have missed that with all the beautiful Tim Holtz products. And then I used that on some gold paper, so just some paper that I had where I had some leftover gold paint that I painted on and I also cut out some of the shapes from the other part of the Mount Fuji of the packaging. And I really love how that turned out once everything was on there. So this is the next page and I'm showing you here how beautiful shiny this gold is because it looks a bit brown here on the screen. And then I'm taking this other paper pad, which belonged to the bigger one. They were a set. And I have no idea where I got them from. I really don't remember. And I wanted to use this paper as a writing spot. But I wanted to cover it up with this beautiful cover. And so I wanted that to flip out like that. So I again made myself a hinge out of a piece of one of the book pages and I'm going to glue that under the white paper so that you won't see that part. And then I'm gluing the cover onto the other part of the flap. And then I'm going to glue that white piece of paper down onto my journal page. Using textile glue because part of it is going on the wallpaper. And I am smearing it with my fingers because I, it was a very thin paper and I didn't want the glue showing through the paper. So this way it was a lot more even. So this provides a beautiful writing spot. And then I also wanted to add this beautiful image onto this inside of the flap. Also with another flap so that you don't lose any writing space but that you have another image there because it just seemed a bit blank. Love how that page turns out. It turned out, love the colors. Then we have this one with the mushrooms. And one of the cards had this beautiful stag here. And I decided to fussy cut him and make a very quick little collage using my scrap boxes. So this is just a random scrap from some cardstock. I wanted to give this stag some more base to sit on. And then I have another piece of beautiful wallpaper that I thought would go really well with the gold that we have on the page. And then I also wanted to add some leaves that I had from that beautiful die cut from Debbie. So Debbie, if you're watching this, you see I'm using your supplies. I'm enjoying it so much and I'm just slowly, slowly getting to everything. It's going to take me a while to use everything. So there you see, and I also added these like kind of golden flowers, which actually kind of remind me of snowflakes. I really love how that little collage turned out. So moving on to the next page, I have these goldfish, which reminded me of the goldfish from the other paper that I have up there. 
so I cut them out I inked them up with some black suit because I just wanted them to pop off the page a bit better I'm not really sure I was happy with that decision but oh well and then there was this beautiful image from the Digital Collage Club and I decided to make that into a tuck spot. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to have that goldfish on there partially, the bone on the bottom. So first I just glued the one on top right where that crease is. I wanted that to kind of swim from the one page to the other. And then I took that print and I glued it onto some cardstock so that it would have more body and I'm just cutting that out so then I glued that fish partially onto the card cut the other part off now I'm going to glue down the tuck spot on the two sides and then I'm going to take the rest of the fish and glue him so that he looks like he's in one piece but then when we put something into the tuck spot the rest of the body will disappear. I think that's kind of a fun effect. <laughs> the pattern on the right side seemed kind of too busy so I wanted to use this paper bag which was also from the Sora Aksan Bento box as a bag and I wanted to punch a partial circle in it. I just put that piece of paper in there so that the punch would work better because again it's a very thin paper and that worked really well. So I'm going to glue that on there, but again, I'm just gluing down three sides so that it can also be used as a side pocket. So now we can put something in on the top and on the side. Moving on to the next page. This beautiful image I thought went really well with the colors that we have on that spread. And I wanted to use this leftover scrap that I had just painted on whatever was left on my brush and I wanted to kind of make a paper pad for some more writing space so I cut down the image to fit the width of the scrap that I had and I'm taking this later to my sewing machine but first I'm going to tear the edges with my tearing ruler because I just thought that would look a bit better and I left the scrap underneath a bit longer and I took it to my sewing machine and just sewed over the top with a zigzag stitch and now I'm gluing that onto the page just on the top so that you can still flip both pieces of paper up. And then I have this beautiful Avril yarn. I've had that for a while. It's from an Etsy store. I will try to link the Etsy store I used below but you can also just go to Etsy and look for Avril yarn and you will find many many beautiful options. And I just wanted another interactive moving part there, so I decided to just cut a few strands and glue them onto that corner of the paper pad with my art glitter glue. Another feature I really love in this journal, I must say. Then moving on, I didn't want to fold this page over because the glue wasn't dried yet so I kind of just pulled it apart. Now this was a die cut I had gotten from Action a few weeks ago that I have never used and I wanted to try this pocket tag. So I used it on my beige cardstock and I'm trying to figure out how it works. <laughs> and I also cut two pieces of wallpaper. So those were with the same die cut set. So you can then just cover your surfaces. So I covered the back side and then I glued the two flaps, closed up that pocket really cute and now I'm going to cover that front piece as well. Obviously if you don't have a die cut like this, which you probably won't, <laughs> you can make something like this by hand as well. It's just a little more effort. 
and that set also had this little ring reinforcer or hole reinforcer which was really cute and then I decided to add some of these flowers that I had used previously or yeah that I had used previously and I decided to layer three on top of each other so this is from Debbie's dye from the Tim Holtz one and I also thought that was really cute and then I wanted to add a tag to it so I have also this set from Action and I'm going to use this middle tag shape because I think it fits perfectly into that pocket so I use this beautiful image cut out the tag and cut out the shape again on my beige cardstock to give it more body so now I'm just gluing the two together adorable tag I think and then I'm using the same Avril yarn I used before to make a bow on top of the tag it's always fun to add texture wherever you can <laughs> And I'm going to stick that into the pocket. I really think it's so cute. And I wasn't sure how to place that on the page. It seemed kind of small for my page. So I decided to make a belly band out of it. And tore a piece out of that same wallpaper that I used to cover the pocket. I'm going to use my textile glue to glue the top and the bottom to make a belly band. and then glue that pocket tag over it and then I'm taking another one of those beautiful images again backing it onto the beige cardstock and this one is going to go on the right side and it's going to be a side loading pocket so again I wanted it to have the opening visible I'm going to glue it on three sides and just stick that down on the bottom and then in that same die cut set there was also this word love and I thought that was really cute I again used the same wallpaper and it's quite subtle but it's there and it's something I probably would, wouldn't usually do but I really like how that turned out moving on I have this little image here that I just decided to put on the bottom right corner I thought that page had enough going on I didn't really want to add more to it and then I'm adding this picture so you see the one on the left the photo that was for my walk this morning so how cool that I'm using this same one in my book today and I just added that as a top loading tuck spot so that's all we have time for in this episode unfortunately I hope you join me for part two coming very soon we need to finish up the decorating and we need to figure out what kind of cover to make thank you so much for watching this far maybe you want to catch up until the next episode have fun with this. Love you guys. Mwah.